and experience that will help us gain more success, knowledge, and wisdom. And we'll have these episodes ready and available on our YouTube channel for your future reference. Before we begin, let's open up with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, thank you for another wonderful start to this year of 2022. There have been many challenges and surprises that we have faced last year, but we want to learn more so that we will be stronger and overcome anything that you will give to us. 
bless our minds to be open to our speaker sharing today to absorb the knowledge and use it for ourselves and for our family. All of this we pray to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, everybody. I'm JJ. I'm Dan. I'm Jack. I'm Jake. And I'm Jamie. And, and welcome, welcome to It's Time Wow! Wisdom on Wednesday! Your weekly dose of wisdom. We begin this year with a new series, Life After Death which is very timely after all the huge spendings we made from the Christmas holidays. Our guest coach from South Africa will be teaching us the art of budgeting, what the snowball effect is, the concept of needs versus wants, and the difference between a good debt and a bad debt. So sit back and enjoy the learnings today on It's Time with some on Wednesdays. Our guest speaker started his work experience with Telcom in 1981 and qualified as fitter and turner in 1984. He also worked in the building and construction department of Telcom Building Exchanges, as well as the vehicle inspection department inspecting new vehicles and panel beaters. He resigned from Telcom in 1992 to pursue a career in the life assurance industry and became one of the top 10 brokers for Southern Life, Metropolitan, and Sandlam for the next 12 years. Aside from this, he had a micro-lending business from 1999 to 2003. In 2004, was managing debit orders for debt collecting companies and was also a debt collector until 2007. Since 2007 up to today, him and his wife started a debt counseling business and has also trained on the National Credit Act, the Consumer Protection Act, and the Debt Collectors Act and did his training as a mediator in 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Coach Ron Reese! Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to another series of Wisdom on Wednesdays where we guess with some field individuals to share their knowledge and expertise with us. So today, we begin a new series entitled Life After Death. So for our first topic, we will talk about budgeting. And joining us again is Coach Ron from South Africa. Hi, Coach Ron. How have you been doing? Fun and you, Joey. And thank you very much for inviting me and see what we can do to assist the people in the Philippines on financial literacy. Yeah, we're excited to hear from you. Coach Ron, what do you mean by budgeting and why do we need to do this? Joey, what is important about budgeting? Um, the reason why a person needs to do a budget <laughs> is because we have never been taught at school why to budget. I mean, if you th think of it, and I don't know about the Philippines, but I've been speaking to the Americans people from Europe and Africa, the universities don't tell us how to budget. Doesn't matter if you're an accountant, doesn't matter if you're a lawyer, no university, no schools teaches you to budget. And what is actually happening, the credit providers and the banks don't want you to budget because you become the slave to the creditor. So those are the things which I say, if we can start looking after our money, we can start taking control of your future. You're right about not learning this in school. This is actually the first part of financial literacy, right? A budget, whatever we had. If we were in school, at least our allowance. And if we had our first job, at least our salary, right? But yeah, they never taught that <laughs> in school. The simplest definition of a budget is telling your money where to go. Now, the reason I like this statement, most of us like to tell your money to go to the credit providers and not to go into our pocket by looking after our interests and our own goals and our own future. The interesting part about budgeting is because even our own immediate family, like your mother and father, never tells us how to budget. They say to save, but they don't, they don't tell us how to save because they were never taught how to save by their parents. So indirectly, it becomes a snowball effect because we, we as uh, individuals, we just follow the sheep. 
And that's why the 2% becomes wealthy because I know how to, to make the money. Why you need to budget? It helps us to control our spending. Now, the first thing what we need to do by controlling our spending is we need to maybe have a little book and take the book and draw a line in the middle of the page. On the left-hand side, that is your income. On the right-hand side is your expenditure. But your expenditure has got two sides to, to it, your needs and your wants, not the need to want it. You see, because the need to want it is, yes, Joey, the need to want it is because we always want those luxury items. So the important part is, is a cell phone a need or a want? So the question I put forward to a lot of people is, is, a cell phone is a need if you take the basic cell phone. A want is if you want off the top of the range because you want image. You know, it's the same as I want to have a lux I want to look like a millionaire, but I haven't got food on the table. I was listening to a podcast of two youngsters speaking. And the one youngster walks into the shop and says, I want that Kadushi belt. I want the Kadushi wallet. And so he carries on and he says, I will take the shirt as well. I says, why do you do it? I says, because I want to look rich. And the shop owner says, yes, we love people like you because we make money out of the middle class. Because the rich people shop at any store. They don't have to show what they've got. They know what they've got. So by controlling your spending, understand between your needs and your wants. Now, what is a need? Food, electricity, water, school fees, education. Those are our needs. The wants is having the most expensive cell phone or having, uh, let's may put it this, a branded shirt or the branded tackies or the or living in, or having a car you cannot afford. So if you start working through your budgeting and start taking control of it and focus on what your needs are and put the X amount aside, you will start enjoying your life. Now, there's a, there's a motivational speaker, and he's passed away now, a guy by the name of Jim Rowan. And Jim, Jim Rowan spoke about four ways of controlling your spending. The first one is spend 70% on your income on yourself and your family. The other 30% spend it in three ways. Spend it in a stock that can make money for you. The other 10% spend it where somebody else can make money. For instance, I will invest in Joey's business and say, I'm going to put X amount in and I can get something out of Joey. And the other 10%, the last 10% is giving back and giving it back to charity. But is how you're going to do it. So that's one of, one of the ways of controlling your spend. But by focusing on the 30%, that 30% will overtake the 70% by creating a passive income to make extra money for you. But we'll go into that on a later stage. Second thing is to keep track of your financial goals. Now, your financial goals could be anything. It could be buying a house, buying a car, or just buying that pair of shoes you always wanted. Yes, I, I, I love to have a pair of Nikes, but I can't afford it. So I don't have to go into debt to buy the pair of Nikes, I'm just going to go in and put $10 away every month till I can afford it. So those are the ways of means of putting certain financial goals in. So your financial goals can have three ways. Your short-term goal to look after to, or to, to look 
at what you want in your short-term goal. For instance, I want to um, go on holiday in December. So I can put uh, X amount away for my short-term goal. My medium-term goal is by next year, June, July, I want to buy myself a car because I'm going to save a, a X amount of deposit for my car. And by 2023, I've got a de deposit for my house for my long-term goal. So by writing them down and you're seeing what your goals is on a daily basis, you can now start seeing how close you to your goal by saving and following your goals by looking at your spreadsheet or in your book if you haven't got a computer. The other one is I just want to move us out of the way. Can you help a relationship with your family? Now, this is a big one because the biggest problem in budgeting and the biggest divorces is because of families don't know how to budget. The husband's money is a husband's money and the wife's money is a wife's money. So the biggest problem that I've seen, and I've done a lot of this, and I say to, when I do my talks, I say, when it comes to the end of the month, there's always arguments. Who's going to pay for the lights? Who's going to pay for the food? And all of a sudden, there's an argument. And the husband will say, man, I've, I've had enough. I'm only going to go for one beer. We know he doesn't go for one beer. And the wife will say, man, I'm just going to go to the shop. And she'll go buy that pair of shoes he cannot afford just for retail shopping. So the big thing is when it comes to budgeting, bring both, both incomes together. And say, okay, how much do you want for a beer and how much do you want for a pair of shoes? It will eliminate that argument. How much are we putting in for food? How much are we putting in for lights and water, for rent, whatever the budget is? And how much are we going to put 10% away for savings? Because the 10% is also an account. Because people forget about that 10%. Because that is sometimes for that unnecessary expense. Maybe the car breaks down. Maybe uh, you might have a, a water leak or an excursion to the schools. Put that 10% away and nothing happens. That could be a deposit for a car. That could be a deposit for a house. All of this makes sense by having a communication with your spouse to make business work at home. Any questions so far, Joey? Is that like the emergency fund? Like the emergency fund. A budgeting will also help you to get out of debt. Now, the reason why a budget will help you out of debt is because if you take all your loans, your credit agreements, and you bring it back into your income statement, and you put, okay, I'm going to pay my clothing account. I've got, I owe them $2,000. I'm paying them $100 at the, at the moment. So you open a column for $100 and the outstanding balance. So every, every month you look at your statement, you can see, yeah, you've reduced your debt and what's available. So you do it with your credit card. So you do it with your car and your bond. Now, what you then can do is by writing it down, you can start realizing in your budget, how much money have you been spending on unnecessary expenses? So I'm challenging anybody who's listening to this just for one month to take your income and write every dollar, every cent down what you've been spending. Doesn't matter if it's for that small for that chocolate or that cool drink or just, um, I mean, it's only $5. Just write it down and calculate it at the end of the day. You'll find out that they, that could have paid off nearly one of your smallest accounts. So those are things that you can take care of 
And applying a budget, you can start, if you've got too much debt, you can start applying it into a snowball effect. I'm not going to go into the snowball effect because that's one of your other financial literacy uh, courses that we're going to run. But at the moment, we're just talking about the budgeting. The next point is keep it organized. Okay. So one of the things is where we overspend lots of times is on your food bill. Now, how do you keep a food bill organized? It's because when you go to the shop, keep to what you want to buy. All, now, one thing what's also important when you go to the shop, go to the shop on a full stomach. <laughs> because when you walk past the food counter or when that, that fresh bread comes out, okay, or those pies or the nice curries or those, you know, those nice spicy foods, that you don't get tempted. Second thing is do not take your kids to the shop. And the reason for that is because your kids always want that sweetie and always want that chocolate. Rather go to the shop by yourself, buy them the sweets, what you feel comfortable with. I say to them, when I do my coaching, go in the morning after breakfast and do not go to the shop when you leave work because you'll always be tempted because you're hungry. One of the other things is how you can also cut in expenses um, is to switch off your geyser if you've got electrical geyser. Use a lift club to get to work. Those are certain things where you can help to make your budget work for you to save money. So those are a couple of things of, of keeping yourself organized and having your goals set to make business work. Again, we come back to the emergency fund. It also helps you to prepare yourself for emergencies. Now, one of the things which I say to a lot of parents, especially if they got kids at school, is go to the school and find out what do the kids need for the year? What excursions are they going to go on? I know sometimes they say hidden excursions. What sport are they going to play? When is, are they going to play football? When are they going to play hockey? When are they going to play netball? What do they need? So bring that back into your emergency fund and say, okay, I'm going to budget for June next year because that is football season. I need to know. I need to buy new, new boots. I need to buy shorts. I need to buy clothing. It's going to cost $2,000. Okay, if I put in away $200 for the next few months, I might have enough that I don't have to go into debt. It can also say, okay, what do I need for my car? I need a new set of tires. Okay, I can last for the next four or five months. So at least you can put uh, X amount away for your tires for that emergency fund. Instead of going into your credit card debt, I says, ah, oh, I mean, I'll just swap my card. It's um, it's easy because it's not the big accounts that hurt you. It's the small ones because it's only a fifty dollars here and a hundred dollars. If you've got twelve of those accounts, it's big money, and that's how a lot of people are losing their bonds or their houses and their cars due to not spending correctly because they're looking at the low-hanging fruit, which is debt. Sometimes we have to focus and be more um, 
how can I put it, strict, more disciplined. And like Simon Sinek explains it, what is your why? Why do you want to budget? Is to understand that you want something in return, like a bond or a house or retirement. Don't come to like my age, we only learned in the later stages how to budget. Because, you know, it just makes life much more difficult. And he says also the how. The how is discipline. If you are not disciplined, you're not going to succeed. You might be disciplined because you don't understand the what. And the what means being consistent. So if you know what your why is, you know what your how is, and you know what your what is, you can succeed in life by starting with a small little budget to make business work. It also helps you to save money. To have that, those wants, to have that luxury, to have that time, money, and freedom. As about practice speaks about the M1 strategy, the M2 strategy, and the M3. The M1 speaks about 95% of the people that's employed sells their time for an income. The M2 strategy is where people invest to receive an income. That's 3%. But if you want to become the 2% on the M3 strategy, is to start budgeting. And look at how to make means of or generating additional business to have time, money, and freedom to have the wants and to have the lifestyle you always wanted. So those are ways of means of looking after your budget. A good financial plan is a roadmap that shows you exactly how the choices we make today will affect our future. So, Joey, that is a small little presentation, what I've done on budgeting. I got it to the point, uh, what did you like about, about the presentation? Or what, what did you like most? Everything. I mean, you already told us what, the why, and the how, right? So you answered actually all the questions. But I want to ask, because your course program is entitled Life After Death. Is there a story Correct. behind this? Yes, it's a, a great story behind it. And I'm going to tell you my story. In 1997, okay, I started my business in 1992, and nobody told me how to budget. I got into the life assurance industry, and my first commission check was more than my annual salary that I earned when I was working for government. And money was just coming in. I supported four families. Um, and then fast forward in 1997, I was one of the first ones con converting our tribal land into a lease to raise a bond. I, I had 500, I'll, I'll put it in dollar terms, I had $50,000 into, into the ground. And on the date of registration, one of the banks withdrew the application and I was in, in big debt. I then landed up in court. So let me explain to you what actually happened. I was receiving all of the legal letters, the phone calls and the summonses. And when I had to go to court the first day, because I couldn't afford an attorney, I put on my oldest clothes that the magistrate or the judge had to feel sorry for me. When I got there, I realized nobody felt sorry for you. All they wanted is their money. So what I'd done is after three, three weeks, because every Wednesday I had to be in court, I realized if I don't change my attitude, I'll always be in a negative mindset. So what did I do? I got to the court as early as possible, listened to what this attorney was saying, 
use this attorney's argument in front of the attorney that was summoning me, and I was playing two attorneys against each other. And some of my cases are won, some of my cases are lost, but what I've learned, you cannot go to jail for debt. As long as you speak to your creditors, communication is key. Because if you got no money, there is no money. Don't try to change your cell phone or, or change your cell phone number or your telephone number. When you get that number and a person phones you, communicate with them. Tell them what your situation is. Say, yes, I'm busy in the budget. COVID came through and you know, I lost an income. Bear with me. I oh, know I owe you money, but can we do the following? So communication with your creditors, communication with your spouse, communication with your kids will give you a better life. But the one key ingredient to all of this is to pay yourself first. And what do I mean by paying yourself first? If you have food on the table, I'm not saying just bread and milk. Have your meat, have your vegetables. A healthy body is a healthy mind, a healthy family. It's the creditors who are the ones who are stupid because they gave you the debt. Yes, you wanted it, but they have to suffer. They have to wait in line because you have to feed yourself first because that's a way you can grow and create your wealth, to create your destiny. As Napoleon Hill said in Think and Grow Rich, plan your work and work your plan because that's the way you're going to get success. Oh, that's a great story. Hopefully our audience learned a lot as well as I did because now I got more enlightened about why you started this course program and, of course, about budgeting. So next week we'll be talking about applying the snowball effect. Would you like to give our, our audience a preview of what you're going to be discussing? I will do that quick, Joey. And the snowball effect is if you look at a snowball coming down a mountain, it starts with a small little snowball and it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. So when you apply the snowball effect in debt, you start with the smallest one and the smallest installment. And you have to apply that with the smallest one to pay off the biggest debt. So we will go through a plan, you have to do that, and have a time limit to get that sorted out as quick as possible. Oh, I mean, I'm so excited to do that because right now, the most of the concerns would be, you know, when they look at their debts, they get overwhelmed about it. They actually don't know how to start, which ones to pay first, so... We're excited to learn from you. Once again, thank you, Coach Ron, for spending your time and wisdom with us this Wednesday. So we'll see you again next week. Fantastic. Remember, there is life after death. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.